according to Sham Sharania, Kawhi Leonard of the Los Angeles Clippers signed a new three-year, $152.4 million contract extension. So Kawhi had a player option for next year. He opts out of that. Tax on three more years. So this year, plus three years. Uh, no player option. Fully guaranteed. I'm a little surprised, I guess, on the one hand, Rob, if the Clippers are going to keep going with this core into their new lovely building uh, on the west side of Los Angeles. You're going to need some stars to do so, and they're playing well, so that helps. On the other hand, this is three years for a guy who, up until this point, hasn't been able to stay on the court. So are you surprised by this announcement? Well, up until this point is, I think, the important part of that. Kawhi's playing more or less every game, active, engaged, really, really effective. And frankly, this is elite team behavior. This is a team that's very confident in what they've been able to put together since the James Harden trade. And let me tell you, they have every reason to feel that confident. This team is legit, feels real, feels well-balanced. And if your stars are bought in to stay, you don't mess with that. Yeah, this was just always going to be the outcome. The Clippers have essentially been committed to this iteration of the team for years now. There's no oh, we trade Kawhi and George for parts and picks. Like, no. And, of course, what's looming is the opening of their brand-new cathedral of a stadium, right? Um, And so the idea that they were ever going to move on from this group, that was just never a realistic one, that they would open that arena with a bunch of role players and also rands, like the Nets have, for instance, this year. You know, a team that famously had to, you know, take take apart a super team. They weren't doing that to go into their new arena. Their owner's rich enough to eat this. Um, and so this was always going to happen. They were always going to extend him. They're going to extend Paul George. They're going to extend James Harden, y'all. Um, they're going to keep this thing on rolling uh, because it's the only like viable option here. Nothing else makes sense. I I think the surprise factor is just that they have crawled through a river of shit and gotten to this point. They're in Zuwataneo right now, and they are deciding, you know what? You know what I need in my life is another river of shit. That was actually a fun time for me. Let's just go through that again, because this is a lot of long-term money you're giving to a guy who just like hasn't been able to stay in the court. And like, I get it when he has played this year, we should just stop and say Kawhi's been fantastic. Very good. Top 10, maybe top five level of player. They win when he plays. That's not a coincidence. It's just, it's tough to think that you went through all of this trauma over the past few years and you're like, let's do this again. Like, I I hope at the very least Steve Ballmer's hand or Lawrence Frank's hand was shaking when you signed the contract, at least, Rob. But what else would you have them do? You well, you could just play out the season and then turn the page. You could just say, "Hey, we did this season. We were great. That's it. Sayonara, guys. We're gonna rebuild." Why? Why would you? Why would you do? They might. They could win the Western Conference. This team What's, is. That I, good. Yeah, I just don't see what the point of that would be. And again, you know, it, it, we have to remember the Detroit Pistons and all of this. Rebuilding always sounds great. Ask the Charlotte Hornets. Ask the Pistons. Ask the Magic. Post Dwight Howard, where they spent 10 years in the wilderness. Like, it sounds so good, but it doesn't always pan out the way that you would like it to. And yeah, I get it. We're we're all enamored of what's going on in OKC. But they're the exception, honestly. It doesn't always go that way when you do some hard rebuild. And again, like, you can't overstate. (laughs) Steve Ballmer paid James Dolan three or four hundred million dollars because he was trying to tie him up in court over this new arena. So he just bought the forum from him. He just said, I'm done with you. Here's $400 million. Like, they were really dead set on starting this new Clipper chapter in Inglewood with this new arena. And so the idea that they would just show up with spare parts and expect the people of Los Angeles to drive to Inglewood to be a part of it. Like, (laughs) that's that's insane. It's not realistic. I'm not going to Inglewood. It's not realistic. And so this speaks perfect sense to me now i see i i guess i'm not necessarily suggesting that they should rebuild 
or that I'm surprised that they didn't just like tear it down and play through a mere coffee, for instance. <laughs> I think it's just more that like I I I think about the emotional toll of the past few years and to do that again to like even most recently when Kawhi has an injury, misses a few games, no one knows what the fuck is going on. Like just like I hope at the very least they got their employees, some of the underlings who are dealing with the day to day of the Kawhi Leonard experience, like better help subscriptions or like massage <laughs> certificates. For Justin like a couple always times worried <laughs> about the employees and the middle management over here. This guy, <laughs> I'm, I'm for I'm for the little guys. You know, I don't. I've never found that to be true. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not really. Yeah. <laughs> but this is what you go through all that stuff for. The hard years, the injured years, the lean years of Clippers history is for this moment in time. This is the best, most actualized version of this Clippers experiment yet. And it's because they finally had the playmaking that they've needed for so long. So you have the length on the perimeter. You have the wings. You have pretty good depth. Maybe not as quite as much as you would like or quite as much in certain places as you would like, but a really good, complete team. We were just talking about them as, as one of the only teams in the West that's been top 10 on both sides of the ball. You don't give that up and you invest in it. You keep cultivating, you keep growing it because the reality is this Clippers team could get better. Like they're just learning each other and they're already this good. If you're able to continue that, that growth, that process while adding to this roster around the edges, why aren't you paying Kawhi Leonard whatever he wants to stick around for a couple of years? Like superstars cost money. That's the way this works. What this reminds me of was when Kyrie Irving played ball for like three weeks right before the trade deadline and then like hit the eject button was like, uh, see ya. This is like the opposite of that where Kawhi has like two months of very good basketball and he's like, all right, now pay me now for the rest of my career. Like that's good negotiating. It, it's very good negotiating. 52 million is what this guy's getting. But I have to say like, Rob, you said finals for the Clippers. They I could we both kind of talk it around there. Like, are, are we thinking them or Denver are probably the safest bets at this point. So I go through this exercise a lot in part because I have such enduring and overwhelming faith in this Thunder team that I think they are going to be Denver's kind of date in the Western Conference Finals. Hmm. But the Clippers Hmm. are the first challenger to really give that idea pause. Minnesota has been great. I'm not trying to take anything away from the Timberwolves, but I worry about their offense in a playoff setting. The Clippers, though, they have the experience. They have veterans. They have a lot of guys who could really deliver in these moments. And you have, most importantly, the Kawhis to deliver when the James Hardens don't. Okay. The so, experience they have is Kawhi, is uh, James Harden's experience in the postseason. I mean, he's, <laughs> they're he's, bringing that experience to bear. He's part of he's part of the formula. And admittedly, there's a reason why I like the Thunder and kind of the effervescence of their style of play relative to the Clippers. But the Clears, the Clippers are such a serious, effective, methodical team right now. I don't know how you talk your way around that without thinking of them as a legitimate contender. What do you think, Waz? Yeah, I mean, as much of if we're calling OKC a contender, I have to call the Clippers a contender, right? Like, they have a group of players that have had way more playoff success and are reasonably close to the level of player that they were when they enjoyed said success. In Kawhi Leonard, and Paul. Paul George has been to conference championships. He's been in huge playoff series. Like, these guys have been in huge games and delivered in huge games in their past. And so, yeah, if, if we're calling OKC this upstart a contender, it, like, there's no, there's no world in which the Clippers aren't also. And so, yeah, I, I think it's nice to see that they've – turn this thing around and and like the things that they're doing on the court makes sense. There's a logic to it, um, a cohesion to it. And so yeah, I'm 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 definitely in a Rob camp in the sense that yeah, if 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 the Wolves are in the next tier after the Nuggets, then so are the Clippers and and definitely I would say these days now OKC as well. And just in case anyone out there is charting the continuity of the group chat cinematic universe, I said that the Clippers could beat the Nuggets, but they won't. No, 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 <laughs> that that won't. Who be suggested a, that? that? Who's in, <laughs> did no, anyone? no, it's just, no. Just I, I said it earlier that like this is a team that could beat the Nuggets. This is a team that and, could make the NBA Finals. You guys need help. I'm, I'm going to get you guys. A, a massage I want to clarify something else that's Clipper related <laughs> as well. Um, just so everybody knows, James Harden is going to get paid. 
He's yes. going to get paid. So he's not um, technically extension eligible right now, but the right. deal is coming. The deal is happening. It's why he was agitating to get himself to the Clippers. Daryl Morey, like nobody else ever does, traded for a guy who had money on the table elsewhere, said no, and just said, I'm going to Philly and I'm going to love it and I'm, I don't even care about my money. Nobody's done it before. Nobody's done it since. But according to the, uh, the, the Sixers, that's what James Harden did. But guess what? He agitated to get over there because he's going to get paid as well. OG Ananobi, another expiring deal. He's going to get paid as well. We see Sacramento couldn't come to a deal with Pascal Siakam, so no deal got done. They didn't just say, oh, let's just do the deal. Let's just make the deal. You know, whatever happens in the offseason, be damned, because that's not how the league operates, okay? So what you just wanted to clear that up. What I'm hearing you saying is James Harden doesn't need to do it in the playoffs in order to get paid. No, he doesn't. Mm. The he one doesn't. exception to the do it in the playoffs rule. <laughs> well, well, this- I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, Steve Ballmer. <laughs> you know, it's, it's my it's rule. True. It's not Ballmer's rule. <laughs> it's true. But this moment, these James Harden rants, this is Waz doing it in the playoffs. This is Waz <laughs> in his absolute element. And Justin and I are it's just true. a couple of mere coffees over here waiting yeah. on the perimeter, giving him his space. That's what we do. Little Listen. liar Daryl Morey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs>